Okay, so if you are studying trigonometry, or maybe you've already studied trigonometry, and uh, oftentimes when you study trigonometry, uh, you don't study it as a standalone uh, course. Sometimes you do, but uh, it's more often to study trigonometry as part of a course like pre-calculus or maybe college algebra. But nevertheless, uh, you should be able to answer this question if you have a strong knowledge of trigonometry without using a calculator. And the question is sine 28 degrees squared plus cosine 28 degrees squared. What is this equal to? Again, no calculator. And if you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna explain exactly what's going on here. And this is a critical, critical topic in terms of trigonometry and more advanced math. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so 20, uh, sine of 28 degrees squared plus cosine 28 degrees squared. Now, if you don't know what the answer is, right? So you're like, hey, I don't really know what's going on here. And if you have a scientific calculator or some calculator we can actually evaluate this, uh, go ahead and do that real quick because I'm going to show you the answer and you might be surprised, but the correct answer is the following. It's one, okay? That is it. All that is equal to one. Now, if you got this right, let's go to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a professional certified expert in trigonometric identities, okay? Now, here's the thing. If you got this right because you uh, kind of recognize this as a trigonometric identity, that's fantastic, but, you know, I kind of have to uh, regress with my little comment here. Uh, you may not be a total expert because this is a big, big uh, topic in trigonometry, and oftentimes it's a very uh, kind of difficult part difficult part of um, any course uh, that involves trigonometry. Students typically end up looking like this when they study trigonometric identities. They're like, I don't like this. I want to get an A+. Plus. Well, I'm going to get kind of get into all this right now. So if you're kind of lost, let's get into it. So I said trigonometric identity, and some of you maybe have never uh, taken trigon uh, trigonometry before. Well, uh, don't you know run away from this video because this is going to make sense, and it'll be kind of a nice uh, uh, introduction to a very important topic again in uh, trigonometry and advanced math. All right, so how do we know all this is equal to one? Well, we have this thing, okay, or a particular thing. It's called a trigonometric identity. What does this mean? Well, here is the identity that we're going to be using, and there are a lot of trigonometric identities. Matter of fact, there's an infinite amount. Now, you're not gonna learn an infinite amount in trigonometry, but you're going to learn a good amount, and I'm gonna uh, kind of uh, show you a few, kind of a little sample of some of the identities that you will learn. But this is one identity. And first of all, let's just answer this question. What is an identity? Okay, well, effectively, an identity, you can kind of think of it just as a formula, okay? It's stating that, uh, that whatever you have over here, okay, it's equal to whatever we have over here, okay? Now we have to kind of interpret this. So this uh, identity, this is the one that we need to solve this uh, question, is saying that the sine of an angle, okay, now here, this is an angle, this is a variable, it's called theta, but it represents an angle like say 28 degrees. But if we square, this angle, and then we add it to the uh, square of the cosine. Now it's the same angle, okay? This is the same angle. Well, all of this is equal to one. Now, if you don't believe this identity, go ahead and get your calculator out and type in sine 28 degrees squared plus cosine 28 degree, uh, 28 degrees squared. You'll see this is equal to one. Now it doesn't make a difference what angle we put into uh, uh, in there, we could put in three degrees, or we can even use radians for those of you that know what a radian is, like pi or uh, radians, we're going to still 
get the same answer. It is one. Okay, so this is again, what we call a trigonometric identity. And this one right here, this sine uh, squared plus cosine uh, squared is equal to one is a very, very highly used uh, identity in trigonometry. Now, identities have different types of names that are associated uh, with them. And when you start learning them, this particular one is called a Pythagor uh, Pythagorean uh, identity. And because, it, you know, you might be familiar, hopefully you are, if you're at this level of math, you certainly should be with the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So that's where that name comes from. But even if you didn't know the name or the kind of a classification of, you know, what type of identity, you need to know these identities. And again, if you are going to study trigonometry, you're going to have to learn a ton of these. And that's why you have to take uh, a lot of notes. But uh, let's go to take a look at some uh, more identities. But let's just make something very clear here that uh, confuses some students. So right here, we have sine squared. It looks like the sine is being squared. Then we multiply by the angle. Don't let this notation uh, confuse you. Uh, sine squared theta, this uh, notation right here, means this, okay? So it means that the sine of the angle, we're gonna take that value and square it, all right? So that's how, uh, this is what this means, if you will. I know it, uh, we don't write it this way, but uh, this is the notation, but it means this. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at some, just a few samples of some uh, identities that you're going to need to know because there are many, many, many identities, okay? So here is one right here. Sine theta is equal to one over cosecant theta. So what does this mean? Well, it means if I have like the sine of 30 degrees, that is equal to one over the cosecant of 30 degrees. So if I have one over the cosecant of 30 degrees, I can write sine of 30 degrees. Okay, in other words, I can replace this expression with this expression, all right? And that's, again, the whole idea uh, behind identities. Now, there's going to be something here I'm gonna talk about in a second, uh, which is a very uh, interesting part of studying trigonometric identities, and that is verifying identities. This is a huge part of uh, trigonometry. You gotta be able to verify one identity and prove that in fact that um, the left-hand side, for example, is equal to the right-hand side, and you gotta be very comfortable uh, working with identities. But let's just go ahead and uh, sample some more identities that you should be very familiar with. So here's another one, the tangent of theta is equal to sine of uh, sine of theta over cosine of theta. Now you could remember these identities, you don't have to use theta, you can use any variable. So we can have like the sine of x is equal to, uh, I'm sorry, the tangent of x is equal to the sine of x over cosine of x. Just remember x represents a uh, an angle, okay? So that angle could be like say 60 degrees, it could be pi over two, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, it could be a radian, it could be degrees, but if you have the tangent of some angle and you don't want to express it in terms uh, you don't want to express this situation in terms of tangent. Well, you can express it this way, okay, or sine over cosine. Now, again, if you have sine over cosine of, a, of one angle, so in other words, sine of, let's say, 70 degrees over the cosine of 70 degrees, if you don't want to do all this, well, we could just simply find the tangent of 70 degrees because this is equal to the uh, tangent of 70 degrees. So I think sometimes uh, trigonometry students uh, get kind of wrapped up in identities just for the sake of identities and verifying identities. But just remember, uh, an identity is simply a formula. It's an equivalency. Okay, this thing is equal to this thing. All right, let's take a look at some more identities. Here is another one, and there is um, so many that I'm leaving out. I'm just kind of giving you a little bit of a sample. So one plus tangent uh, squared uh, theta is equal to secant squared theta. And of course, you can see down here, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to my channel. Matter of fact, let's just get this out of the way. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and uh, then hit that notification button as well. That way you'll get my latest videos. If you're not, um, or if you're new to my channel, thanks so much for dropping in. But I've been on YouTube for a good 10 plus years. I have well over 2,000 plus videos from basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between uh, to include some trigonometry. But if you are a trigonometry student and you're like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm really struggling with trigonometric identities, well, then you have to check out 
my full pre-calculus course. You'll find a link to it in the description below. I will teach you everything that you need to know about trigonometry and to include everything about identities. And I'm talking, you know, um, you know, double angle identities, half angle identities. And for those of you out there that are studying trigonometry, know what I'm talking about, including verifying, verifying identities. So this is where you're going to get my full, complete, comprehensive instruction. But uh, anyways, let's get back to looking at some more identities here. So here is another, okay, over here, let's just take a look at these two here. You're like, wow, but this is a lot of uh, identities. Well, this is only, I'm only showing you maybe like 5% like of the identities you need to know. Now, this is why you need to take a, you know, a lot of notes. And if you don't have um, you know, these kind of uh, good academic habits in terms of mathematics or just in you know, uh, academic, ha academic habits in general, you're going to struggle in advanced math. There's just too much information going your way. There's no way anyone is just be able is going to be able to kind of memorize this. And depending upon your teacher, when it comes to tests and exams, they may or may not give you the identities, or you may or may not be able to kind of use uh, your notes in terms of at least uh, referencing the identity. So you may have to, you know, do a lot of just kind of rote memorization. So you have to be organized and you have to be focused. But here again is another identity. Uh, so we have cotangent of pi over 2 minus an angle is equal to tangent of that angle, okay, or tangent of theta. So why do we have all these identities? Well, again, in trigonometry, okay, uh, there's and in more advanced math, well, if we end up with an expression like this, okay, we can write it, uh, you know, in a simpler manner. And this is very important, uh, especially when you could pr uh, progress into uh, more advanced math like calculus, right? So basically, these trigonometric identities help us uh, simplify situations. Here's another example. Secant of uh, negative theta is equal to a secant of a positive uh, theta. Basically, they're the same thing, but when it comes to finding the secant of a negative angle, it's the same thing as finding the secant of uh, that uh, angle uh, uh, just the you know positive version of that angle. So let's go ahead and continue on. And here I'm going to just give you this last little sample because I don't want to discourage any of you out there to take trigonometry. You might be saying, oh, forget this. I'm not taking trigonometry. Look at all this stuff. You got to learn. I know there was a reason, you know, I didn't take this course. No, I don't want you to be discouraged. And if you are, again, taking trigonometry right now, you can learn this stuff. But, you know, I'm not going to lie to you either. It requires a lot of work, okay, a lot of study, because you are, you know, this is a pretty advanced level of mathematics. But here is another trigonometry or another trigonometric identity. So, again, you can use different, um, uh, you know, variables uh, to represent angles, but this right here is tangent A plus B. So A and B represent angles again. You could have, you know, a tangent of X plus Y. Doesn't make a difference as long as you understand that we are talking about angles. But tangent of A plus B is equal to tangent of A plus tangent of B all over 1 minus tangent of A times tangent of B. So if you came across some sort of situation like this, or if you can manipulate something algebraically, where it, you basically have uh, this type of expression, a tangent of an angle plus a tangent of another angle, all over one minus the tangent of the product of those two angles. Well, instead of writing all this, we can just simply write this, okay? All right, now, uh, just as a kind of um, uh, a reminder, all right? Now, what are we gonna do with all these trigonometric, uh, trigonometric identities? Well, one of the main things you do, and it's, uh, I'll just kind of mention it again, is you verify, okay? You verify trigonometric identity. So if, for example, here, we would want to prove that all of this stuff right here indeed is equal to the tangent of A plus B, okay? Now, how do you do that? You have to be super strong in algebra and they have to use other identities. There's a whole kind of course of um, study that you need to you know learn in order to verify trigonometric identities and this is could be again you know, a little difficult for some of you out there but here's the main idea if you're at this level of math you have to understand algebra you have to have very strong algebra skills so if you haven't you know um done well in algebra and you're in trigonometry or pre-calculus and you're struggling what you want to do is go back and review, okay? Just get caught up. You don't have to relearn all of algebra, but you do have to have very strong 
you know, skills in terms of manipulating, uh, working with formulas, equations, etc., cetera, et cetera. But whatever you do, don't give up. And if you need help with this level of math, you've got to check out my pre-calculus course. Again, you'll find a link to it in the description below. And if this little video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.